KinesiologyChris.com. Let's review the bony landmarks of the radius and ulna. We'll be looking at the bones inside the right forearm in this video. If you're uh, not sure where your right forearm is located, um, I'm not too sure I can help you. But uh, here are the bones. You can see the anterior view is on the left and we have a posterior view on the right. These bones work together to help your upper extremity create some nifty motions and uh, it also provides support. These two bones are often reviewed together because they work together to form joints like the proximal radial ulnar joint and the distal radial ulnar joint. Uh, so uh, it's important to know their relationship to one another. However, they must be distant cousins or something because these bones sure don't look related. Anyways, as the saying goes, two heads are better than one. And seeing how both of these bones have heads, they could probably think of some pretty smart articulations together. The radial head is located here, and the ulna head is located here. Interestingly, only the radius has a neck, and uh, it's below its head, duh. The radial head is round on the top and gets thin as you move distally. That's the radial neck. This gives the radial head the appearance of a radial dial. Why am I telling you this, you ask? Well, it's not so that you can tune into Tokyo next time you play with the radius bone. It's because the word radio starts with the letter R. Radius also starts with the letter R. It's a good way to identify and remember the radius bone. Now the radius bone's cousin, the ulna bone, that poor guy, he just has a head, no neck, which is weird, I know. But it's also why when he tried to rob that bone marrow bank a few years back, a witness easily identified him by saying, I don't know, he is, he got a big old square head. He was arrested immediately and sent off to jail. Radius was devastated about this, and uh, he missed his cousin Ona. So, he decided to send him a love notch. You know, those necklace charms that split into two halves and each person wears one. Well, the Radius bone has Ona's notch. And Ona bone, it has Radius's notch. The Ona notch of the Radius is located here. And the Radius notch of the Ona is located here. Notice that each bone has the notch directly across the opposite bone's head. That is where each bone rests, or uh, in this case articulates, its head. I know, they like to snuggle, right? But uh, they're related, so we'll let it slide. But I do want to say that they may have snuggled a bit too much. Because one time, the radius touched one of those uh, tuberosity toads that hop around. Those nasty little things. If a tuberosity toad touches you, you can literally grow a tuberosity which is an area of rough surface that forms on the bones. Although it looks bad, and his black book certainly got a bit smaller, the tuberosity actually provides a rough surface for tenons to attach themselves to. Just like the uh, rough surface on the bottom of your shoe that keeps you from slipping, this rough surface gives tenons a firmer grip and keeps things from just uh, slipping off. The radial tuberosity is located right here, and almost like the tuberosity followed the oblique cord's path, the ulna tuberosity formed right here. Ulna was obviously upset and embarrassed that he had to call all the other bones he hung out with recently in case they caught a case of the tuberosities. And by the way, the bleak cord has many names. It has like 13 names actually. All boring enough to put you to sleep if I read them. So Google it and pick your favorite. But all you need to know is that it's flat, round, fibrous ligament that connects the all non radius bone, and most importantly, we have no freaking clue why it's there. That's right, no one knows what exactly the function is of this ligament, so uh, a ligament with 13 names might just do nothing and just be leftover evolutionary garbage from our primate years. You gotta love it. Okay, back to this obviously true story. The Ona eventually got out of the slammer, but didn't have a ride home. So he had to walk, because bones can't drive. That would be stupid. Well, some truck driver didn't see the Ona walking, and ran right over the poor guy, and cleared out this huge notch. But don't worry, the Ona's a bone and he survived. And he named his new scar, the Truck Cleared Out Notch. But remember how Ona has no neck? Well, it gives him this weird accent when he talks, and everyone thought he said trucular notch. Pay no attention to the fact that he doesn't have a mouth. The bone can talk, I promise. Anyways, the name Trochlear Notch stuck with all his friends, and the Trochlear Notch is located right here. And it provides plenty of room to articulate with the trochlea of the humerus bone. If you look at the ulna from a sagittal plane or from a uh, side view, the Trochlear Notch actually resembles a U-shaped notch, 
which can be an easy way to identify and remember the ulna bone. Just below the trochlear notch is the coronoid process, and it's located right here. Just above and on the opposite side of the trochlear notch is the lecranon process. When your elbow is flexed, the elbow kind of resembles a old dull crayon, you know, the pointy part, which is why when a little boy was walking, he found the thing on the side of the road and he took it home. He thought it was a white crayon. Old crayon sounds a lot like a lecranon anyways. Try to say those two words together three times fast. Old crayon, a lecranon, old crayon, a lecranon, old crayon, oh, oh, I'm no good. But at least we just brainwashed each other's brains and the old pointy crayon looking part of the bone will easily be remembered as the lecranon process. So as the story goes, the uh, little boy that picked up the crayon just so happened to live across the street from Radius and Ona's home. And when he found out that that dang bone was not a crayon, he threw Ona right back into his own yard. He was home. And uh, Radius had an awesome welcome home gift waiting for him. Radius gave him, wait till you hear this, he gave him two matching gold stylish processes, which uh, looked a lot like golden vampire teeth. What a cool gift. Radius kept one and Ona got the other. And they both wore them on the outside portion of the bone. The uh, styloid process, the radius, can be found here on the lateral and distal portion of the bone. And the styloid process of the ona can be found on the medial distal portion of the bone. Those bones got some style, I'm telling you. The radius also has what looks to be a small dorsal fin on its back. If you look at its backside from a posterior view, the fin, which is actually called a dorsal tubercle, a tubercle is a small rounded process on a bone. This is actually one of the bony landmarks you can palpate on the back of your forearm, near the wrist on the uh, thumb side. Now the dorsal tubercle is part of a groove, however, I feel like it's the uh, center line that divides the four well defined grooves that can be found on the posterior portion of the radius. These grooves allow the tendons of the muscles that control the wrist extensors and abductors to pass through them smoothly. The first groove is located here, second groove is located here, then we got the uh, dorsal tubercle in the middle, groove number three, and we got the fourth groove over here. Moving on. Radius didn't want his best friend slash cousin to ever get into any trouble again. So while Ona was sleeping, Radius shot him with some spiderweb-like substance which stuck these two bones together forever like super glue. It's called the interosseous membrane, and it's located between the two bones. It's a thin plane of fibrous connective tissue that helps the two bones during motions. It transfers forces to the humerus and serves as an attachment site for some of the muscles. It's located right here in the middle. Now the last thing we need to take a look at is the radius and ulnar shafts. Um, I mean the, the bone shafts. Uh, oh boy. The shaft is the uh, long slender portion of the bone. We will start with the aforementioned interosseous membrane that is in the middle. Now this interosseous membrane attaches to both bones and that's also the site of the interosseous border on both the ulna and radius bone. Now I think this would be much easier to get a perspective of what's going on if I show the bone shafts from below through a transverse process. And let's pretend we cut off the bottoms of both these bones up to the shafts and we are looking directly at the shafts from below. Now both bone shafts are basically shaped like triangles with some minor twists and turns like a defective twizzler. So we have the radius on the left and the ulna on the right. Now moving up from the interosseous border we have the anterior surface here. The anterior surface has its own border, the anterior border. And the good news is that both bones have it. Now that's one side of the triangle. Let's go back to the interosseous border. If we move down from the interosseous border, we have the posterior surface, it's located here. And it also has its own border, the posterior border. And lucky for us, both bones have it again. So now we have the anterior surface and the posterior surface established for both of our bones. And you'll be happy to hear that the last surface is just as easy to remember. Starting with the radius, we have the lateral surface located here. And then looking at the ulna, we have the medial surface located here. Now remember, we are looking at these bones in the right forearm and in an anatomical position. 
So the final two surfaces are named directly as the relationship to the body. The medial surface is towards the midline of the body and the lateral surface is away from the midline of the body. Now let's flip back to our normal view and apply the same colors of the surfaces to the anterior and posterior view. One of the other landmarks I want to point out is the supinator crest or the interosseous crest and it's located at the proximal portion of the interosseous membrane here. It is where the supinator muscles originate. Thank you so much for reviewing the radius and ulnar bone with me. I hope that you liked the style that I presented this video in. If you did, please like the video below so that I know. And also you can check out some of my future videos by subscribing to my channel. If you're looking to make a new friend, and uh, who isn't, you can follow me on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Happy studying, my friends. Kinesiologychris.com